Greetings and welcome to the eighth movie night extravaganza takeover of the This Is Revolution podcast. My name is Forrest Miller, host of Movie Night Extravaganza. Tonight we will be talking about Gillo Ponticarvo's uh, war film, The Battle of Algiers, um, about the 1954 to 1957 war between the Algerian National Liberation Front and French military. Uh, Syed Yacef, one of the last leaders of the NLF, you know, uh, National Liberation Front, sought out Italian filmmakers to tell the story of the NLF, decided on Gillo Ponticarvo and Franco Salinas to tell his story. The Algerians put up almost half the money to make the film, and it was made with a non-professional cast in Algiers and tells the story of the general strike and armed struggle that wound up in defeat but inspired the final victory against the French military in, well, by then it was the OAS, actually, but the French military in 1962. Now, before I bring in the panelists for this evening, I'd like to remind you to like and subscribe both to the This Is Revolution podcast and to my channel, Movie Night Extravaganza. You can also support Movie Night Extravaganza on Patreon, where you can get access to all kinds of amazing discussions. We've actually been doing that now that we have a decent amount of um, patrons. I mean, at least over 10. That's pretty good. <laughs> um, and, uh, you know, links are in the description. So without further ado, let's bring in the crew. First of all, my good friend, my co-host, host of Protonic Reversal, co-host of Movie Night Extravaganza, and he plays in Conan Neutron and the Secret Friends. Conan Neutron. How's it going? Very good, man. It's good to be here. Uh, I, I'm gl so glad we're doing this movie. I'm so glad that I, Conan Neutron, suggested that we do it, because I think it's kind of right down the line for this show, right? Yeah, no, 100%. It uh, hits the film nerd buttons. It hits the This Is Revolution, quite literally, buttons. I mean, this, this is like the... This is perfect. This is to be catnip for this audience. Yeah, the it's joke, the joke that, or not joke, but the line that I was going to use that I forgot to write down was I was going to say this is indeed a revolution. Um. Okay. <laughs> so, sorry to sort of like step on the joke you forgot to do. But, yeah. uh, stoked to do it. Uh, this is a movie that uh, only got on my radar a couple of years ago. Uh, and basically it was described to me as perhaps the best movie ever about, uh, you know, revolutionary tactics and that it was brutal and both of those things are true <laughs> yeah and uh you you found it from the criterion challenge right like that was the first uh yeah it is right. it is an absolutely brutal and intense movie but i should also bring on erica strout a georgia-based filmmaker music video director and musician uh half of the musical duo dream tent plays guitars and sings in motherfucker and the live band of conan neutron and the secret friends <laughs> hi <laughs> How's it going? Pretty good. How are you? You get here okay? You uh, you, you drive you drive <laughs> safely onto the restream uh, <laughs> onto the restream set. There's some treacherous traffic going, but I yeah, I made it safely. We're here. <laughs> Glad to be Watch here. Thanks here. for having me on. <laughs> All right, so I should uh, right now play the uh, trailer because I you know. Um, you know, we do it this way. We do the intro first and then the trailer. I don't know uh, how much I like that that version of things, but Conan and I have been going back and forth, which one is a is a, is a more superior way. With this one, <laughs> I need the professional introduction. So um, here is the trailer. Nous sommes arrivés à la moyenne de 4,2 attentats par jour. Oui, il faut distinguer les attaques individuelles et les attentats à la bombe. Nous disons qu'il y a une minorité qui s'impose par la terreur et la violence. Nous devons agir sur cette minorité dans le but de l'isoler et de la détruire. La France doit-elle rester en Algérie Si vous répondez encore oui, vous devez en accepter toutes les conséquences nécessaires.
<laughs> yeah. Wow. So um, one of our first uh, comments that we got uh, is about, um, I think the revolutionary leader in Battle of Algeria was an actual leader of the liberation struggle in Algeria. Yes, he was actually, he was a colonel in the uh, NLF. He was one of the last, um, you know, leaders remaining after the Algerian war. Um, Say Sayed Yassef was his name. And um, he, he wrote a book about his experiences and actually sought out uh, filmmakers, which is something that I wanted to talk about in the after party, but we can start talking about it here. Um, actually, no, I think it is something that I want to talk about here. I can't remember which, how I divvied up these clips, but um, uh, he, he sought out two Italian directors because Italy kind of was the, la was the least colonial, I guess, of the, um, of, of the European powers. Um, so he sought out these two Italian filmmakers. He had like three of them in contention that were uh, vying for his for his um, book story, I guess. And he ended up going with uh, Gilo uh, Ponti Ponticorvo, who um, you know I, I think is 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 a leftist. He's a, a Marxist of some type, um, like openly. And um, his film had had won or been nominated for an Oscar right before that, uh, Capo. And um, he was just getting out of this uh, this. You know oscar contention and like really really like he, he was trying to say that people were offering him like a film a week i mean who knows if that's true or if that's kind of him just being <laughs> but... yeah <laughs> <laughs> film a week you know it's, oh, it must be slow yeah <laughs> but um yeah he really wanted to do an algerian film the original draft that they wrote before meeting um syed um the, the original draft was about a french paratrooper and it was all told from like the perspective of a, of a French uh, a French paratrooper that gets um, um, converted, I guess, to the Algerian struggle, and they and he and uh, he and Salinas had gone around uh, Algeria, really explored it, and then realized like, no, nobody wants to see a European like a Eurocentric story about the Algerian Revolution. So they went back to Italy, and they were like, this isn't going to work. And then this guy kind of tracked them down and was like, I have this book, and here I wrote this manuscript for you. Turns out it was kind of a trash manuscript. He kind of just wrote down a bunch of like uh, <laughs> NLF talking points and just handed it to them in, in a pamphlet in a pamphlet form or whatever. And was like, make this. <laughs> and like, That's not how you write a script. <laughs> that would have ruined this movie, though. If they did the whole you know, here's the Westerners' perspective of like what's happened, like that would have ruined this movie. One of the things that make this this movie very interesting and special is that it, it's not only told from the perspective of the people, but you have so many actual people, like non actors. And actresses that are just in the movie that like the directors he liked the looks of them you know and then like yeah. in some cases they had to do adr and dialogue replacing because that's the downside of not having actual actors and actresses right but like it gives it a unique feel that's pretty special frankly and like and to have like, kind of like, oh. yeah well i noticed it's kind of done in the um almost spaghetti western style right where they have people you know kind of speaking in their uh they're like home, like home language, I guess, or they're speaking kind of a mixture of like Algerian and French, I guess. And, you know, um, kind of having this full conversation, there's actually multiple languages, I think in Algeria and a big, uh, a big part of the dynamic is that not everybody speaks the same language. So like the, the ethnic divisions within Algeria are actually more language based. I was, um, I was listening to a podcast about it than they are actually like ethnic based, right? Like people actually come from, you know, the same background, but like, because of the language differences they've kind of decided on well the french really decided on a difference between ethnicity and because people look so different i mean it's a mediterranean country right like it's in north africa it's not um in the southern africa like the, the part of africa where they kind of you know there's a big there's a big uh or you know the imperial wise they kind of created this racial division where it's like north africa is kind of more Euro european uh descended and south africa is a lot um, they're like, no, these are, this is like the, the black Africans and the European Africans. So like Africa itself was divided into these, uh, different divisions. I mean, I don't know. It's fascinating to go back that far and they kind of only reference it briefly in this movie, right? Like they're like, oh, well, we got along fine for 130 years, which isn't true. I mean, you know, there were different, <laughs> there were different generational struggles, but in the sense of this kind of struggle, right. Where that could only really happen in the decolonial period, like it can only really happen post world war II. And a big reason that it happened post World War II is that, um, and I'll shut up after this and let you guys talk. But a big a part, a big part of the reason it happened is that there had so many Algerian soldiers um, fighting against the Nazis and fighting on different sides of uh, World War II because France was kind of you know broken in, in half pretty much, and they had resistance fighters and they had um, you know people that were working with the Vichy government that were Algerian and they kind of saw France get down on its knees and and kind of like you know surrender and they're like holy shit we could actually do this and then of course. 
uh, Vietnam and Dien Bien Phu, which is, um, you know, the big defeat of the French in, in, in the Vietnamese uh, French battle, which is why we got involved and which is where our, our you know, troops got into Vietnam. So I'll shut up and let it, you know, and let you guys. Uh... <laughs> you basically just gave like a history lesson uh, in, in like Reader's Digest form. But yeah, um, I mean, just the only thing I'll cap on that because I want to hear from Erica is that like, yeah, north coast of Africa, what is now known as Algeria. If you, if uh, folks that are not up in their geography, like think about like the, the next the next thing over, it's like Carthage and all that, right? Like, so it's like you have it where it's like not when people think of the, of the Mideast, like Egypt and whatnot, this is like a few a few countries over from that, but on the north side, if you look at the, the regionalistic perspective, um, it's contentious in a lot of ways because France was a, uh, France was a colonial power. You know, granted, they, they get, um, you know, knocked on for uh, all kinds of, like, weird, uh, you know, stuff from World War II and stuff like that. But, like, yeah, they were absolutely a colonial power and a, and a terrible one, an oppressive one. And still like, are. I mean, and to be fair, still continue to be, yeah. But like, <laughs> by comparison, like, like they don't, they don't get that, um, that, uh, that microscopic focus in that same way. Anyway, but that's the yeah. I wanted to get there. Erica, hit it. Conan, you sound super quiet to me. Forrest, does he sound super quiet to you? Yeah. Here, let me see if I could boost his audio. I, Here. I almost never have that problem. <laughs> <laughs> I can boost your audio a little bit, but if you have a yeah. way to do it, uh, oh, yeah, on your side. All right. Sorry about that. I just want to hear what you have to say. Um, I, yeah, this. Well, there's a, I mean, I, honestly, I, I think that there could be an interesting way to do a story where that's where you're showing a French paratrooper getting recruited by um, the Algerian people who are, want to be the. I forgot the initials FLN. Oh, NLF. Uh, NLF National Liberation you. Front. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not good with initials uh, and and various yeah. movements. I can just. I have it written down right in front of me. Yeah, no, that's a good idea. You're smart. But like, but well, that being said, I'm glad that they didn't do that with this movie because I I really like the way it's put together. It doesn't really like. I feel like I mean it's very emotional, but like as far as like the dialogue and stuff, like they don't they don't talk that much yeah. about the emotional like side of what they're going through and what they're dealing with and what they're trying to accomplish. So like, it's interesting to, I don't know. It was very, yeah. It's, yeah it's real with. More than anything, right? Like mm -hmm. the, the utter torture that people are going through, right? Like they make sure that you kind of see it in high definition on the faces. And um, yeah. one of the most beautiful shots I think in the movie is obviously um, Ali Lapont, the, uh, you know, the, the main, the main kind of uh, resistance fighter that comes into his own throughout the movie. There's that shot where he's looking over the, um, over the, the wall in jail and he's seeing somebody get, uh, you know, put under the guillotine, and you see his eyes, and it's that like dramatic yes. shot with his eyes looking at somebody um, getting executed. Yes, it's very yeah, yeah. which is yeah. not like, that's a, that's a nut scene, and it's a absolutely beautiful visual as well. You know, yeah. So, and, and I was, as pray <laughs> I was praying the whole time, I wouldn't actually have to see the guy's head roll. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're like I don't. I just don't I don't need to see this. I really yeah. don't need to see Well, it. the like, rest of it was brutal yeah. enough. I was like, don't add yeah. to it by making me watch this guy's head roll down the, <laughs> down the concrete. I mean, the whole thing is, like, <laughs> successfully stressful. Like, as a film. Oh, yeah. It, it does an incredible job of actually showing what it looks like, which is crazy because there's no documentary footage at all in this. Yeah. This is all recreated. And there are times where you're like, when stuff's, like, blowing up, and you're like, whoa, Jesus. <laughs> like, it's crazy. Yeah. I think I think this is a clip that I have for the after party part, but um, they actually rebuilt uh, the houses that they blew up within the actual NLF uh, French war, and they rebuilt the. Just like, to blow them up again. <laughs> the guy, yeah, just to blow them up again. So that scene where they blow wow. up the the uh, Ali Lapont, you know, the, the building that he's in, and they blow the whole thing up. That actually, they they rebuilt the buildings that were there using. Um, Syed Yassef's money because he really was an NLF leader. And chronologically speaking, it's important to look at uh, where this movie is taking place or like when this movie is taking place, right? Um, they officially triumph over the French in 1962. This movie is being filmed in 1965, 1966, it gets released. So it's, it's extremely important to realize that like these people have just gone through this struggle against the French. This is for recent years. history. Yeah. It's like very yeah. recent history the time it comes out yeah absolutely and and think about the fact that like how salacious uh 
Yeah, like this would be like a movie at the height of the Iraq War, like a movie about it coming out two years after it gets started. Like yeah, that, using that everybody, wasn't using there. all of the Iraqis that have just kind of <laughs> the people that like, just have been bombed and, and yeah, like, yeah, it's like great. whoever's left, they go into Baghdad and they're like, listen, we want we want to reblow up the houses that you have seen yeah. get blown up in your neighborhood. <laughs> 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 pictures this time. It's fine. We got it. We got this covered. <laughs> um. So this is. So I, I want to pull up this. Um. I watched this documentary last night and, um. Never a good first sign when someone says, "Hey, I watched this documentary. Check out this this uh, this video from." But no, I don't think documentary... it's a documentary though. No, so I watched this documentary last night. Marx's poetry: The Making of the Battle of Algiers. It's from two thousand four. Um, they they went through the filming and they went through the entire process of making this movie. And I pulled a bunch of clips from it um, because I found them really fascinating. I just kept on finding things that I found fascinating that I wanted to talk about. And like, you know, <laughs> my brain is not working that well today. So I was like, I'm going to make sure that I get these uh, clips. So um, this is the uh, story. This is the actual story of, of how the movie came to be. And I wanted to play that for you guys. Um, and, you know, they're all they're all speaking in, in French and Italian. So it is subtitled. Um, so I probably at the end of it will summarize it for whoever listened to this by audio. But um Je faisais partie de ce front de libération nationale. Moi, j'étais le chef principal avec le grade de colonel. Ce qui fait que moi, je me suis trouvé en prison, jugé, condamné à mort trois fois. J'ai été transféré en France par la suite. Et c'est comme ça que j'ai écrit euh, mes mémoires, et, etc. Lorsqu'on est en prison... Ça constitue un lieu de méditation et de réflexion. Laisser un message à travers ce petit livre, je ne savais pas ce qui devait m'arriver. La, la guerre pouvait durer 20 ans ou 30 ans. Et donc, il fallait laisser ce message à la génération euh, à venir en disant, voilà, voilà une étape, une partie de ce qu'on a vécu pour libérer le pays. C'était dans ce but-là, déjà. Et, et une fois la guerre terminée, en 62, j'ai lu euh, un article disant que les Italiens et d'autres encore voulaient faire un film sur la guerre d'Algérie, notamment sur le, la, la ville, parce que c'est le cœur, le poumon de, de l'Algérie. Et c'est comme ça que j'ai dit, tiens, j'ai écrit déjà un truc et il faudrait que je le mette dans un langage cinématographique. Et je vais en Italie, pays méditerranéen. Gli algerini che volevano fare un film sulla loro rivoluzione, eh, sapendo questo, sono venuti nella persona di, di, di un grande mio amico che è Sadi Yasef, che è diventato un grande mio amico Sadi Yasef, eh, portandomi un eh, soggettino. J'ai montré mon scénario. Il m'a dit jette-la à la poubelle parce que <rire> c'est pas comme ça qu'on fait des films. Il soggettino era come tutti i soggetti scritti dai non professionisti, soltanto un pamphlet laudativo della loro rivolta. Il ha detto guarda se si tratta di questo non lo facciamo neanche per ridere. Lo stesso ha detto Solinas, anzi con parole più dure. E, però se vi interessa, siccome noi siamo da tanto volti verso questo, questa materia, proviamo a scrivervi una, una cosa proprio per, per voi, cioè non facendo più il colonialismo in generale, ma sull'Algeria. Sadi ha portato la sua persona e la sua esperienza e la verità della sua esistenza dentro il film. J'ai invité tout ce monde là, surtout Ponte Corvo e Solinas, per venire in Algeria, sono resté près de deux ans, enfin, plusieurs mois. Pourquoi Pour euh, rentrer dans la peau de, de, du combattant en, en interviewant tout le monde, euh, voir comment que les gens mangent, comment qu'ils réagissent, enfin, tout un système de façon à comprendre ce que c'est que la révolution algérienne. Et ainsi, je lui ai montré tous les, les endroits et en prenant le livre, j'ai dit voilà, la grève de huit jours, ceci, ça c'est des événements qui ont aidé l'Algérie à, à faire un pas Now, Forrest, you can 
do a translation of everything that was just said for the audio feed. Yeah, right? no, it's way too much. But I mean, you know, the basic story is that uh, Saadi Yassif, I guess, is the way that they pronounce it in that. Um, he, uh, you know, is in prison in France at the end of this war, um, sentenced to death. Um, and they let him out because the war is over. And he, he, he's written this memoir. He travels to Italy. He has them. Um, he, he, he meets with these directors. Uh, did you, by the way, did the did the subtitles get blurry for you guys? I noticed that people said that in the chat, but they seemed all right to me. But um, They didn't look blurry to me, but. I, I haven't been drinking that much. So, uh, no, <laughs> they were fine. Um, so, yeah, so he travels to Italy, and these two filmmakers are already looking to um, Gilo Ponticervo and, uh, and Franco Salinas, which is, you know, doesn't sound very Italian as a name, but I, I guess <laughs> it um, <laughs> sounds more Spanish. But, um, you know, so, so they, uh, they're making this movie for him. It was right after, um, uh, you know, Gilo got done with uh, Capo, which is a movie about um, World War II and a lot of the stuff that happened within that and, um, and the camps, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure. And because um, I, I saw images of it, I haven't seen the movie. But, um, you know, this famous director, he travels to Algeria. They, they spend a couple years there meeting everybody and they decide to write this uh, manuscript just for them because, you know, the actual book is obviously a book. It's not written in the form of a screenplay. So that's basically what you what you missed in the subtitles if you're listening to this by audio. Or if apparently you, you were too wasted to read subtitles. <laughs> Which I'm just going to assume this audience is. Uh, yeah, but I mean, that's heavy, right? Like, there's a lot going on here. Uh, there's a lot of factors at play. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm just going to go back to the the subject of the movie i mean this is probably the gotta be it's gotta be the best movie about guerrilla warfare right i mean like one of them for sure and uh um which is why which is why in the trailer that we watched um they said they watched it in 2003 in the pentagon which i don't know why you'd brag about that but uh they watched <laughs> it before before invading iraq because they assumed that you know fighting in baghdad would be a lot like um you know on the on the french side in the case of the u.s obviously but like mm -hmm. um <laughs> They felt like um, fighting in Iraq would be a lot like fighting in Algeria. It would be people kind of, um, you know, very invested in Islam um, because, you know, throughout this movie, uh, Islam is is kind of a, a recurring theme, right? Like that's kind of where mm -hmm. they get their strength from. That is a big part of their uh, cultural heritage. I mean, um, it is it is a big scene when the, the women, uh, you know, the women with the NLF uh, have to cut their hair and kind of wear Western clothes and walk through um, the Put casual, makeup like, on. Kind of, yeah. Um, yeah, that throughout, was powerful. Throughout the movie, they also they're also kind of able to get away with uh, you know getting past the French sometimes because they put on the women's uh, like the, the the burqa and the the full headdress and you can't see their face and that doesn't really work um, when they're running through the casbah and they look at their feet and realize no those are you know those are guys' feet and start shooting at them but like that is kind of something that they try um, mm -hmm. you know to get out of the to get out of their hiding spot yeah because the paratroopers are have an understanding that they don't touch the women. Yeah. 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 Well, yeah, and, and it touch was women in that culture. Right. <laughs> exactly. French, um, known for never touching well. women. <laughs> See, there's so many places I can go with that, and I'm, I'd like to just acknowledge that, and I also acknowledge my restraint. Uh, additionally, <laughs> the um, you know talking talking about the whole thing with the the spin up to the Iraq War, like I mean they they have like. Um, you know, like folks like Richard Clark and stuff that have like talked about this in terms of, of like, you know, uh, being like mandatory viewing. Uh, but they look at it in terms of like, hey, here are the kind of things that yeah, you might see, like as we occupy this other country. This is this is this is. And like he t talks about, um, you know, the winning message or whatever. But it's like hearts and minds. Right. So this is like a hearts and minds movie or the the vain attempt to try to do so in 1966. Like when they're going around trying to give out bread, mm -hmm. it was like, dude, you're killing us. You are literally killing us. I don't care about your bread right now. Your bread can F off. Yeah, you know, like it's 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 crazy that you know the more things change, the more they stay the same. I guess. I mean, yeah. But it's 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 fascinating to see depicted so artfully because it, this is a beautiful movie. This is a really interesting movie. But I mean, it's, whew, it's it's tough. You know, it's, and, it's tough. And it's a movie that. But if you're, yeah, if, yeah, for folks that are like watching or listening to the show, it's look. This is this is extremely your shit. Yeah. yeah, I do think it's interesting that they had to put in, and we saw it in the trailer when we watched it, the the 
disclaimer. It's almost, it wasn't, I guess, exactly phrased like a disclaimer, but it was a bit of a disclaimer where it was like, none of this is actual news footage. Like, <laughs> this is not newsreel footage that we're using for this. Because, because it looks like it could were, be. Yeah. yeah, I think maybe they were afraid. I don't know if they were afraid people would get confused or if people were actually confused about that, but yeah. Well, I, I was watching other filmmakers talk about this and they actually kind of the opposite. They kind of needed that uh, reassurance at the beginning of it um, sometimes that like this isn't real, right? Because it feels so real and you see bombs yeah. go off and you see people dead in the street and you know, your brain kind of goes to, you're watching an actual war unfold in front of you. And it's almost like you kind of need the reassurance. Like, no, listen, mm -hmm. we're not actually bombing people. This is a movie. Like, all you know, it is filmed within the actual CASPA. We are kind of uh, recreating the events, but this is not the actual events. You're not actually watching the bombs go off. We have not followed people into a restaurant with a bomb, watch the bomb go off. Um, in some cases, even kind mm -hmm. of uh, an early form of suicide bombs. I mean, not for all of the women that walk in with bombs, but I think the woman that sits down in the airport kind of has to because she can't really just leave a bag unattended in the airport as far as I can, you know, I was trying to rewatch to see if she left with it because two of the women did leave with the, with the bombs. But I think that woman stays seated and lets herself get exploded with everything else, right? Oh, she did. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I, yeah. I, I think I think you might be right. I'd, I'd have to look yeah. at it to see the the one that kind of affected me the most is like, there's the the club where everyone's like you know having a dance. They're like doing the mambo or, or whatever it is, and mm -hmm. then like you see the bomb get left, and you see that kind of moment of like, oh well, I don't know, like should I be doing this? And then you know there, there's kerfuffle and then like people are like oh wow it's crazy well the Something first bomb goes off right yeah, it's, yeah. yeah. The first bomb goes off, and they're like oh wow that's crazy oh well let's go back to dancing and then it, then it's like then you get the explosion where like oh my god there are bodies everywhere and that yeah. shows the real toll of those kinds of tactics those kind of revolutionary tactics which are not clean those are not mm -hmm. clean tactics those are are messy brutal they and the the point is to affect as many people as possible because the idea is if you're uh, if you are not part of the revolution, you're part of the problem, right? And and then that uh, yeah. soft complicity is still complicity. Uh, but to see that yeah. like laid bare like that, like I think that that's something that uh, you could. Uh, some people have argued that this is basically a propaganda film, right? It's not a propaganda film because it, it does it does show that like this is nasty. This this is yeah. what revolution actually looks like, and like it's not fun yeah <laughs> i mean i i kept thinking when they were planting those bombs when the women were planting their bombs like they're like looking in the faces of all the people that they're about to maim or murder like with this bomb yeah. like they're looking at them directly and they're about to walk away and just let them get blown up and but that's part of it that's like what they they feel like these are and these people are part of the oppression that they're feeling like these people are buying into the system and supporting it and living in within the privileged privileged part of it so yeah and, know, and, like... and we should say that the city uh algiers is kind of cordoned off right mm -hmm. and uh you get to see it even more throughout the film because at first you know I, there aren't people standing at the entrance to every single casba um checking papers which i think is an important moment because um you know mm -hmm. france has just gone through uh world war ii and a lot of people as the as the uh you know as the general or as the colonel says in this movie a lot of people were uh you know resistance fighters were put in concentration camps and now they're the ones kind of occupying these ghettos pretty much i mean you know and uh standing in front of them checking papers the same way that a nazi would right like they mm -hmm. are cast pretty much in this movie as like as the nazi occupying force um uh, within this colonial government and mm -hmm. you know the parts of the city that are nice the parts of the city that are, are french the parts of the city that are uh you know lived in by europeans that are traversed by europeans right yeah. the, the french quarters of algiers are it, it feels like you're in france like it looks like you're in france people are just having fun they're dancing people have a lot of money to spend um mm -hmm. you know people are just getting a, a milkshake or something and then a bomb will rock one part of the city and they're not that overly concerned about it or they'll be dancing and a bomb will rock the city they're not overly concerned about it they're in this nicer part completely kind of cordoned off from the rage completely kind of cordoned off from the actual effects of this colonial system um you know in in the faces of, of these uh you know these algerian people they're um completely separate from it and it's not the way that we think about it um you know in kind of almost apartheid apartheid kind of system where like it's uh, completely racially based because they are allowed like the women that are um algerian women are allowed you know they just have their faces uncovered 
wearing Western clothes, wearing makeup. They are allowed to walk into these restaurants and kind of uh, mingle with people and people don't give them another look. So there are Algerians completely mm -hmm. um, immersed within this uh, colonial system. And you realize that too, I think in those scenes. Yeah. Well, yeah. And they also like, what's the first thing they do is they, you know, they lock down um, vice. Right. And so it's, it's, it's it, and it's sort of like, it's not like a, like a cut and dry thing necessarily. And you, you get to see like the, the, you know, the local drunkard basically get hassled by children. Uh, Killed by children, I think, right? Like beat to death by children. Yeah, I mean, yeah. is that part implied? That must be implied. Yeah, it's it's strongly implied. It doesn't go well for the man. Um, yeah. And, and I think, but then by the same token, Forrest, I think you're the one that mentioned like uh, that uh, the G. Martin character. He talks about, oh well, you know, we fought the Nazis and this and that. Like, and they're very big on doing that. It's like, well, can't you see the? And of course, you can't. Uh, you're being oppressive. In the same way, you know, that like you are oppressing a people here and like you just don't just don't, not only doesn't see the connection at all, like just almost willfully uh, chooses to not see the connection, which actually makes that role because, of course, he's actually uh, not just an actor, uh, but a um, uh, a really good one. I mean, he was in uh, what's Day, uh, Day of the Jackal and like, yeah, a bunch and, of and, he, and he started out the waiting for Godot. He was in the original cast of that. That's awesome. I mean, that guy's yeah. a great actor. I didn't he, know that. That's that awesome. <laughs> he, he, you're like, oh, that dude. I, where I know that guy from, and like, he's great. But like, there's so many like non actors and actresses in this um, that that it's almost you, you could be excused for f kind of forgetting about that. But like, that is such an archetypical character. Basically, the person who is doing so much wrong that believes he's doing everything right. You know, and that's that's the they will greet us as liberators mindset. Yeah, right? I mean, and, I, and um, <laughs> I, I think something that kind of is we the will same be welcomed. Game. Uh, is in the same vein, um, you know, they torture the fuck out of prisoners wherever they take them, right? They, because this is a revolutionary movement and they realize that you have 24 hours really to get the information or else, um, you know, they really only know two people within this revolutionary movement, their cells, they're kind of, you know, so you can only really get certain people and you have to work your way up the chain. They change their, uh, you know, all of their information within 24 hours. So they accuse. So um, Jumps Bauer in on it to uh, do his do his business. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> no, so you have so you have the liberal and even communist French press kind of um, in these press conferences, um, you know, talking to this colonel and realizing like, no, we're kind of torturing people. And he says, let's try to be precise. The word torture isn't used in their orders. Uh, we use interrogation as the only valid police method against clandestine activity. The NLF asked all of it. Um, the NLF asks all of his members in case of capture to remain silent for 24 hours. Then they may talk. This gives them time to render any information useless. And thus, what procedure might we use? Civil law procedures may take months for a misdemeanor. So you're essentially, this is essentially the same thing that the Bush administration did with, uh, you know, enhanced interrogation. They're um, changing the definition of the word torture and saying, well, you know, this is okay in, in, this, uh, in this case, but not in other cases. Obviously, you can't torture people in France. You know, the, the press would be up in arms, but this is Algeria. You know, what, what should we do? Just sit around and wait for the courts to handle it? Yes, is the answer to that. I mean, but, you know, <laughs> that's not. Yeah. So he says, uh, yeah. the problem is this. The NLF wants to throw us out of Algeria, and we want to stay. Even with the slight shades of opinion, you must all agree we must stay. Um, when the NLF began, there were no shades. Even the communist press wanted it crushed. We are neither madmen nor sadists. Those of you who call us fascists, forget the role many of us play in the resistance. Um, you know, so he's literally using that, uh, his connection to World War II, to the anti-Nazi resistance, right? To say, well, I can't be a fascist. I was, you know, um, he even says that, you know, many of us are, uh, were put into the concentration camps. Many of us um, suffered this, this fate, right? Along with uh, the Jewish people, along with, you know, everybody that the Nazis were trying to eliminate um, as resistance fighters, we can't be, you know, you're calling us fascists, but like, we've just gone through this whole thing and you're going to, you're going to, you know, accuse us of that. Because remember, it's less than a decade when the movie takes place after uh, World War II is over. Yeah. In the beginning of it anyway. <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And like watching that, that mon like short montage of like the different guys getting different kinds of torture applied to them just like kind of one after the other for a minute there it's not super long but like it's very impactful <laughs> Ooh, what is it? yeah well and it doesn't it's it's you know it doesn't seem fun 
<laughs> like not to put to put it bluntly, like it's sort of like no, this yeah. is this is nasty, bloody. This mm-hmm. is you know uh, again, I don't, I I feel like I'm overusing the term, but brutal. And, and that's one of the things that makes it such a special film because I feel like a lot of times it uh, it gets uh, glorified, right? And and yeah. here it's like it's like it's like celebrated but not glorified, which is an important distinction. Yeah. And the end result is, I think, celebrated more than anything else, right? Like their liberation is achieved, but um, it's not hidden that you know. Everybody, yeah. <laughs> to to get their liberation, they need to do things that are you know equally brutal in, in many cases yeah. to the things mm-hmm. that the French are doing. And the French obviously have a full military; they have helicopters, and you see the helicopter uh, following everybody around the entire movie, right? They're blowing up mm-hmm. buildings. They kind of um, there's a great line uh, where the where the guy. Um, in the you know the reporter is talking to the guy and he's like uh oh isn't it um hold on he says uh he says, isn't it cowardly to use your women's baskets to carry bombs which have taken so many innocent lives and he says isn't it even more cowardly to attack defenseless villages with napalm bombs that kill many more thousands more um obviously planes would make things easier for us give us your bombers sir and you can have our baskets and i i think that that's a Love line that. that really yeah resonates because you know, yeah. it's this endless escalating uh, violence. And, um, you know, the oppressors aren't oppressors because, you know, it's two uh, ev- evenly matched forces um, that are, you know, going against each other. The oppressors are oppressors because it's the might of the French military versus a uh, naturally occurring liberation movement. Like it's people that, you know, they, they might be equally brutal, but they're not evenly matched. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, they have to use um, whatever was available to them, whatever they could get their hands on in order to get their message across. Um, Which is I would a rich- be interested to know more about, like, the UN connection while they were trying to get the UN to pay attention to what was going on and to, like, that's part of reason why they organized the, stri- the strike. Excuse me. Yeah. Um, so the UN kind of completely failed them because you needed a, a certain, like, vote to kind of have <laughs> they're, they're like, <laughs> <laughs> but i mean Sorry. once again that's another uh that's another iraq kind of connection right like the un isn't really going to step in and and they're yeah. you know they've completely stopped the violence for a week which is kind of i mean it's amazing the french are continuing to uh you know raid places the french are continuing to torture they're continuing to maim people where they can and there's this week of non-violence complete non-violence where they're showing hey you know the whole city needs to grind to a halt and it's this general strike. And that's kind of the thing I think that originally um, the, the filmmakers were originally interested in because I mean, I, they were Marxists. So like this mm-hmm. idea of a general strike kind of um, the economic, uh, you know, blockade, I guess, by, by the people in the country completely stopping the country from um, producing anything for an entire week. Because it's not mm-hmm. just, a, a, you know, an end to violence. It's that nobody will work. Nobody is willing to, uh, you know, nobody wants to work anymore. Nobody um, wants to work anymore. <laughs> <laughs> But um and and it, and they really, and they achieve this though right like no matter what happens they do achieve this and uh, the yeah. UN fails them because the French are a powerful force in the UN and because um, as much as you know the world opinion is turned towards uh, decolonialism this is happening at the same time as the Cold War and the idea kind of is well if we kind of you know back off aren't uh, isn't Russia just going to step in and and pull this country into its sphere of influence can we really just leave and and leave this country to the Russians no let's keep being colonial then. And that happened over and over and over again throughout, um, you know, both Africa and Asia. Like, mm-hmm. um, and it's the same thing that happened. And I love that this movie connects the, because this is the real thing that happened. They connect their own struggle to the struggle of the Vietnamese under French imperialism. And Dien Bien Phu, which is like the big moment where the French are, are defeated by the Vietnamese, um, you know, that, that moment is, is reflected by the Algerians, many of which were uh, soldiers in or some of which at least were soldiers that ended up coming back, um, you know, and uh, into Algeria after that. And they go, holy shit, we could do this too. Their struggle is our struggle. And there's this internationalist mode of decolonization, which I find like an insanely fascinating and kind of beautiful. Um, but but much the same way that that happened, the U.S. steps into Vietnam. And that's our moment to say, well, we can't really let, you know, red China come in and, and really... Um, take hold of this country, we kind of have to stay there as a steadying force and make sure that, um, you know, like uh, Ho Chi Minh doesn't go the wrong direction. Although Ho Chi Minh's original thing was like writing letters to 
uh, Eisenhower and Kennedy saying, hey, I want to be like Vietnam, like the Vietnamese George Washington. That's where my struggle is connected to democracy. And <laughs> so it's, it's a devastating yeah. history, but it, it is Before it is one that happens. That yeah. is America saying, hold my beer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> No, don't stop. I, I just wanted to throw that joke in there. Yeah. No. Um. So I so I have one more uh clip that I wanted to play on on this stream, and then uh we can you know wrap up and jump over to uh the after party version of this because we keep it down to an hour here on this is revolution a tight hour. Um. <laughs> right. If you, want, if you want to see more, head over to Moving Extravaganza. Yeah. Join the Patreon. All that stuff. There's lots more. Just like. I guess I'm doing the pitch now. Uh, just like uh, this <laughs> movie, you know, we do this every month. We also uh, do what seems like a hundred thousand of these episodes, like every every month for uh, all kinds of other things. And there's a lot of uh, if you love movies and like like to hear it contextualized, sometimes with politics and sometimes not. Usually with me throwing in jokes that land at least two thirds of the time. Uh, go <laughs> check out movie next Subscribe on YouTube, Twitch, all that. I'll do the pitch again later. But uh, there's a lot of new folks that are watching this now, so figure should mention that. And and uh, Sean Moon is correct in saying that uh, Cuba, Algeria, Vietnam, roughly around the same period, they are in fact like within the same few years of each other that all this is happening. But um, okay, this is the other clip that I wanted to play, and then we can wrap up and. La ricerca di eh, del tono di verità era facilitata dal fatto che sia io che Solinas, lo sceneggiatore, avevamo chiaro nella testa, eravamo convinti che in una guerra, eh, anche se da una parte c'è la, la posizione giusta storicamente e dall'altra la posizione sbagliata, ma sia gli uni che gli altri nel fare la battaglia, nel fare la guerra, fanno delle cose eh, piuttosto brutte sia l'uno che gli altri. Ci è venuto abbastanza facile di arrivare a un tono di equilibrio che pur non nascondendo che noi siamo decisamente contro il colonialismo e quindi eh, eravamo tra quelli che si auguravano a quell'epoca che l'Algeria si liberasse da, dalla Francia, ma malgrado questo vedevamo che c'erano anche de, delle motivazioni giuste da parte della Francia. Le difficoltà eh, per la realizzazione di questo film erano prima di tutto economiche, perché eh, i produttori che a quell'epoca mi proponevano un film alla settimana perché eh, il film precedente Capò era andato all'Oscar che quindi mi, mi cercava, io dicevo sempre di no perché, per mio difetto perché sono difficilissimo a decidermi e, e invece quando ho detto adesso ho io una cosa da proporre a voi ma tutti avevano un momento di perplessità, poi dicevano no, ma proprio perché desiderare fare questo film? Un produttore che per carità di patria non nominerò mi disse ma che c'è scritto fesso qui? Dico perché? perché? Ma cosa vuoi che gli freghi agli italiani dei neri? Finalmente abbiamo deciso eh, con Franco Solinas, con alcuni amici, di farlo noi, cioè troviamo quelle quattro lire iniziali che servono sono andato da Musu, che era stato il mio direttore di produzione in tutti i film precedenti, a cui sono molto grato perché era stato un, direttore, un organizzatore generale straordinario, e gli ho detto, senti Antonio, perché non fai il salto di qualità e fai, diventi produttore? Dice, sì, ma con che soldi? Dice, vabbè, firmiamo un po' i cambiali, gli algerini mettono il 45% del costo del film, la mattina dopo mi ha telefonato, anzi ti ringrazio, ci ho pensato a una grande occasione e così siamo partiti. Sadi Yasef invece è stato utilissimo perché conoscendo la Casba come le sue, le sue mani eh, ci ha indicato, provate a vedere in tale caffè, in tale zona per trovare queste facce che io cercavo maniacalmente. Sono un maniaco della rassomiglianza, della vicinanza eh, somatica del personaggio che interpreterà i vari ruoli, che dei personaggi che interpreteranno i vari ruoli con quello che si è pensato scrivendo. Preferisco eh, 
prendere uno come si suol dire dalla strada, cioè uno che non ha mai fatto il cinema, ma che abbia la faccia giusta che avere un attore che abbia una faccia meno giusta, a cercare per settimane e settimane nella folla, nella gente che si incontra per strada, si finisce per trovare eh, il personaggio giusto. Ma per me è importante come per un pittore a cui eh, si dica, vabbè, questi sono i colori, certo non sono quelli che tu volevi, ma è eh, con un corno, se, se volevo quel colore o quella faccia è decisivo trovare. La ricerca... Deep State got him. <ride> I, yeah. I love the I love the uh, that whole thing about faces though because I feel like that's how I would be as a film director, which is what I originally wanted to do, and then I ended up somehow talking about movies instead. But um, <laughs> but like that would be walking around, be like, I need to find the perfect face. I, I cannot make movies without the perfect face. <laughs> but I yeah. mean, that's it. Mission bro accomplished. I mean, like, there's so many like like great expressive Algerian faces in here that are. You know, like you're like, wow, what other what other stuff is this person in? Oh, literally nothing else. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, they're great in this, you know. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think uh a lot of the a lot of them were well, I don't I mean, I don't know, like how much any of them I mean, it was, since it was filmed so soon after the whole thing, like I guess a lot of them knew what was going on and, and were experiencing it in their real lives and like i yeah. think had that authenticity in their reactions to things and with how they were acting yeah so and, even and without the training they were able to kind yeah of yeah they, their roles. it's not that much of a yeah it's not that much it wasn't of a, a huge push it wasn't a big leap yeah well i, it's, I have it's a, like, I have a... It's like asking Ryan reynolds to be um you know affably smarmy it comes naturally <laughs> Well, I have a I, I have uh -huh. a clip that I'll play in the after party that, that talks about this. But like some of the crowd scenes, right? Like they um, they're talking about like uh, how they felt like during these scenes, almost people lost themselves and almost um, transferred right back to that struggle again. And they almost felt like they would lose control because people were moving into this uh, big wave and kind of re re reaffirming these roles that they played within the revolution itself. Mm -hmm. And these huge crowd scenes where they're all kind of um, fighting, people kind of got right back into that because it's so. Uh, You know, it's so much um, so close to when the actual events have happened and it was in the actual places where the events happen. So it's kind of this, uh, you know, kind of um, mind mind bending uh, thing. But I want to give you guys a chance for uh, final thoughts and then I'll, I'll get I want to get way more into depth in this in the after party and stuff. And um, I'll send you guys the link to that. But, uh, you know, I guess starting with Conan because he picked the movie. Final thoughts, anything you, we didn't get to uh, the soundtrack, anything. I was going to say, Marconi did the soundtrack, which the fact that this comes up like 50 minutes into the show just shows you how much there is to discuss about it. But uh, like almost everything Marconi did, it's it's fantastic. And I actually heard the soundtrack way before I knew the film because I had one of those CDs, CDs, that uh, had a bunch of different Marconi scores on it. And I didn't know Battle of, Ag Battle, of Algiers, uh, Battle of Algiers from Moses. I didn't know anything about it. But like I was like, oh, that's dun, dun, dun. Dun, 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 dun. I was like, oh, that's interesting. Oh, that's cool. Like, it's just he's he's a uh, look. He's he's the, he's the greatest of all time for a reason. I mean, like that that guy knew how to how to score some movies, and it, it's almost everything he did is iconic for a reason. And it's I really appreciate the usage of it in this film because it it adds it, it like so many other things does it adds and doesn't really do a whole lot. Like a lot of scores I find modern scores, especially no names mentioned, they try to do everything and they. <laughs> It's like do less, do less. Like like look look at like you know these. Yeah, it's very it's very minimalist, right? It, it plays the same role I think that um actual like you know diegetic uh, uh music kind of does within these things where it, it motivates um you know crowds that are already kind of motivated. And there's a great there's great things like there's like when the organ comes in, it's sort of like funereal, and it's only like uh, funereal, sure. Uh, there there's like two sections that it comes in. It kind of comes back and like one of them comes in as like was after an explosion. And like, it's, it's just, it's excellent use of music. And, uh, I think the proper term is funerally. <laughs> <laughs> I, well, music kicks ass. It's, and it's great. And like I said, you know, this is a very beautiful film. It's a very brutal film. It's one of the best I've ever seen about guerrilla warfare and counterinsurgency, uh, up there with Z, 
which is one of my favorite political films, which eventually maybe I can convince everyone to cover. Um, <laughs> I think it's crazy that it looks so much like a documentary and that not a single piece of it was was uh, documentary footage, all redone. Uh, Jean Martin's uh, fantastic uh, in, in his role. Uh, and, you know, everyone from, like, the, the uh, Black Panthers to the NSA have uh, studied this film um, with different agendas. <laughs> <laughs> and I think that that's fantastic. You know, you could totally, totally see like CIA paying close attention as well as Al Qaeda, like Palestinians, et cetera, et cetera. And, I, you know, I said early on, I like that the French are not let off the hook for their brutal colonialism because I think people it's the forget one film that, they... that brings uh, the IDF and Palestinians together in a cinema. <laughs> They're like, this is just like us. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, but uh, but Conan, because uh, we have to wrap up. Um, what's I, gonna say, I, think, yeah. I, think I think it's a fantastic film that um, I think if people haven't checked it out, they need to check it out because I think it's it's um, it's it's unique, and I think that it, it's it's something that's very much if you're into film and or revolution, <laughs> 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 ideally both, then you'll you will like Battle of Algiers. And I'm stoked we got to cover it. Um, what do you have coming up on on Protonic Reversal? You wanna wanna plug anything for that? Uh, sure, Ian Miller of Protonic, of Protonic Versals. Uh, next episode is Ian Miller of Kowloon Walled City, Interesting Times Gang. I've got, um, oh God, let's see, Deer Horse coming up. Uh, Will from Dialect is coming up uh, relatively soon. Justin Broderick, Godflesh, and uh, Jezu and whatnot uh, sometime in the next month. There's other things too. I don't know. Uh, ProtonicReversal.com. <laughs> Go get it. Uh, oh, yeah, there's a new Kona Neutron The Secret Friends uh, EP. Dangerous nomenclature, uh, neutronfriends.bandcamp.com, or on the other things that you can listen to music to, all the places you normally find music. All right, uh, Erica, final thoughts on this movie, or uh, you know, any of this, any of this conversation that. <laughs> <laughs> um, this was definitely like I don't know that I, like based on just like you know you see that icon, you see the picture, on the streaming platforms. I don't think this is a movie I ever would have chosen to watch based on that. Like maybe if I had it on a list or something that I was looking at, I might go, but I'm so glad that you guys asked me to be on today because like I said, I'm not sure that I would have watched it ever otherwise. So thank you for that. Um, I didn't fully know what to expect. I kind of like to dive in and just see it and just like get my own feeling as I'm watching it and then sort of look things up and um, learn more about how things come together. But um, if art is supposed to have, if, if art is successful when it brings up emotional reactions in people, like any kind of reaction, good, bad, <laughs> happy, sad, ugly, uh, you know, violent, uh, brutal, torturous, like this one definitely accomplishes that is 100% worth, worth a watch. And, um, I don't know. I don't know if anyone else, like if this like pinged anyone else's brain. Sorry to use corporate lingo there, but um, <laughs> uh, the part where um, the the paratrooper Jean, Jean Martin, who mm -hmm. I can't remember what his character's name is right now for some reason, but Mathau, uh, Colonel Colonel Mathau. Uh, yes, thank you. Uh, he's talking about the emphasis. He's like, we're emphasizing policing. And he says, I know you don't like that word, but it's the only one that describes the work at hand. Yeah. And to me, that was like, uh, like, I know that he wasn't specifically talking about anything related to America. But like, when I think about like the, the issues that we have with policing in America, I was like, oh, that's because people, you know, like, I think a lot of people don't like to think about what the origins of policing really are. Um, a lot of people don't think about that or, or know about it. So yeah. I just thought that was a really interesting point that he made because we're going to capture people and torture them. And that is the policing work that we yeah. have to do. You know, policing, you know, yeah. Yeah, policing, you know, like um, yeah. the classic definition of the term. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Listen, I know you guys don't love this, but 
but yeah, no, yeah. I, I think that really it works well also with the scene where he's talking about, uh, oh, well, torture isn't actually used in our orders. Like, let's try to get the terminology precise, right? Mm -hmm. That I think goes hand in hand with that. Those uh, those terms where um, the French kind of going through this, you know, having just gone through World War II, having gone through their own resistance movement, um, you know, uh, against uh, a Vichy government, like not wanting to be uh, associated with that, but at the same time being like, well, listen, our orders are to keep Algeria. They want to take Algeria um, and yeah. we want to we want to keep Algeria. And that's kind of just how it is. Like, if you guys don't like that, what would you do? And I think that I, I think that any time that there's an occupier and an occupied, right, th that conversation resonates because um, you can come up with any kind of, uh, you know, whether it's a humanitarian, def like, you know, uh, excuse or whether it's a, um, well, you know, you can't let the communists get in excuse, like a, a whole bunch of different uh, excuses, but whatever mm -hmm. the uh, excuse is, the, the actual action itself, I think remains the same. Um, yeah. Well, the uh, only other thing I wanted to mention, oh. oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah. No. The, uh, I just also wanted to comment on the sound because I feel like um, Ennio Morricone obviously did a fantastic job with this film. And I agree, it's like, it's not as as full, I feel like, with of music as some of the other films that I've seen that he scored. But I think, like, it's powerful. Like, the music that he did is powerful. And then also, like, in as a, as a compliment or contrast or whatever the right word is, like, the silence, those moments where it just goes completely silent, like, that is super powerful, too. So, like, I appreciate the overall design of the sound for this film. Yeah. Really well done. And uh, uh, the other the other thing that I think they designed really well with the sound is uh, when you're kind of just listening to the music in the club and everyone's kind of dancing to it. And then all of a sudden there's the explosion and the music goes dead. And mm -hmm. yeah, you, know, you realize that, like, no, the, the, you're within the club space, I think. Right. Within that sound design in the space. And you're like, oh, fuck. Like the club that I was just uh, spending time in that I've kind of at least scanned the faces of people. Right. Faces are really important within this film. Like, um mm -hmm loaded and everybody's kind of dead and you know that's going to happen but still like in your head you're like oh fuck that that really that's the part that i think gets to you more than anything else within those um yeah. scenes um do you want to plug anything anything coming up uh uh i'm a little embarrassed to say it but i'm i'm in work mode right now so i don't really have anything to announce all right <laughs> in may yes that's a little ways <laughs> off but yeah 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 i will be with I'm so excited about that too. That's gonna be great. Yeah. All right. Well, um, thank you. I uh, <laughs> we are going to be launching season three of Movie Night Extravaganza on Friday. Um, crazy that it's gotten to that point already. Crazy it's gotten that out of hand already. Season three. <laughs> <laughs> but we'll be doing uh, we'll be doing Vice um, because we ended with American Psycho and because um, Adam McKay had Don't Look Up and everything. Um, we're going to be doing Vice on Friday. That's going to be fun. We're going to be talking about Dick Cheney. Whole lot of whole lot of dick on stream um, <laughs> with, <laughs> with Christina Oaks. Um, uh, you know, follow uh, Movie Night Extravaganza on YouTube. Um, follow Movie Night Extravaganza on Twitch. Um, we have a Patreon. You know, uh, follow both This Is Revolution and Movie Night Extravaganza on Patreon. Um, we will be going over to an after party. I will. Um, you know, it'll be on, on my channel and I'll try to post the link in the chat while uh, this is going on. But um, thank you so much for joining our stream tonight. Thank you, both of you. And I will see you guys, um, you know, over, over there on the uh, on the old after party. On the other thing. Thanks. Bye. <laughs>